Lord, because with you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you under the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are set in your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called a crowd with his disciples and said to them, If you want to become my follower, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends in Christ, Jesus and his disciples went up not to Caesarea Philippi. They went north. And it was there that he asked them this question. What are other people saying about me? How am I being rated? Some think you are John the Baptist, raised from the dead. Others say you are Elijah, the prophet, who never died. Others say you are Elijah, who got into a fury chariot and went straight up to heaven without dying. When Jesus heard of all his answers, he said to them, But you, you, who do you say that I am? His question to them was, Do people really understand me? Are they following me for the right reason or for the wrong reason? Don't go to church because you want to see mega churches or because of the ambience of the church, the stained windows. Times are too turbulent for that. Go to church because the minister can preach the word of God. People today want Christianity in a light fashion. They want the benefit that comes with following Jesus, but not the substance of what the faith is all about, to get to know the person of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we look so good, smell so good, and people feel that life is so good for us. We are often deceived by the looks or the smell because sometimes our circumstances, our situations, our marriages, our loneliness, our pains, are all dressed up. We come out into the open smiling. We put on smiling faces and look as though we are on top of the world. But really, we feel like we are buried beneath it. 
Don't think that the person beside you doesn't have any troubles. Sometimes our troubles are so deep that we stop talking and groan to ourselves because we can't find words to express what is deep inside of us. And there comes a time in our lives and in your life when you should stand up and be proud of the faith and say, I believe in the redemption by the blood of the Lamb. And I believe that he died on Friday and rose early Sunday morning. And I believe he's seated at the right hand of the Father on high. And no matter what I go through, because only a substandard of my faith, and I know I am saved, not because of my circumstances or my works or my performances, but I know that I am saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, who has redeemed me from sin and death. And when justice tried to hang me, mercy cut the rope and set me free. And Jesus revealed that his kingdom was not of this world, but he still did not get it. He revealed again that could, they could not have the crown without the cross. And then he called Peter aside and said, who do people say that I am, Peter? And Peter said, they're giving you different names, Lord. And then he said to Peter, but you, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? You, Peter. And Jesus knew he was going to suffer and die on the cross. And he let the apostle know that. But Peter was more interested in himself than what was going to happen to Jesus. And so Peter said, God forbid it, Lord. God forbid it. It will never happen to you. And then Jesus said to him, get behind me, Satan. Because Jesus knew immediately that it was not Peter himself who was speaking, but Satan speaking through a weakness that Peter had. Sometimes and somewhere in life, there is a cross that drives you on your knees to pray. And that cross makes you forgive people because you don't have time to argue with people. We should be thankful because of what God has delivered us from. It, makes, it may take years to get over people about what they have done to us, what they think or how they feel about you. Sooner or later, you got to let them go because for God you live and for God you will die. Who do you say that I am? And this is the most urgent, the most relevant the most theological question that confronts us today. Who do you say that I am? Wherever you turn in life, you are faced with the implication of this question. And throughout the ages, various individuals have attempted to answer this question. And Jesus is more concerned with what your answer is that, than what others have written about him. Who do you say that I am? Martin Luther wrote, I care not whether he be Christ, but that he be Christ for you. And Peter responded, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Is he Christ for you?
our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and thy glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God Almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever.